What's up guys? It's me, Technology Dude 117 and if you guys are not already following me on Twitter, please do not forget to do so. I will be posting the link to my Twitter account down in the description. Now today I am coming at you guys with my review of DMC Devil May Cry. Now it's been over four years since we were last graced with the Devil May Cry game. It's now 2013 and Devil May Cry is back and better than ever, sporting new locations, abilities, and of course a new Dante, DMC Devil May Cry sets out to reinvent and revive the long dormant series. Now for those who don't already know, DMC is a third person action game developed by well known British publisher Ninja Theory and published by Mega Giant Capcom. So is Ninja Theory's take on Devil May Cry worth your time and money? Let's find out guys. Prime date, you ugly sack of shit. All right, so let's start off with the story of the game. Story-wise, DMC is actually really good. Going into the game, I wasn't really expecting such a strong story. Uh, now, based off of my minor knowledge of the previous titles, what I was expecting was an extremely convoluted and muddled plot, and a game that really didn't take storytelling too seriously. But what I got was actually a fairly interesting treat. Now at its heart, DMC is a story of revenge, but there's more to it than that. It's a story about discovery and maturity, and it had me hooked from start to finish. So the story, of course, follows Dante. Now, Ninja Theory has totally reimagined and reinvented Dante, uh, and he is badass. He's a cool character. I like him a lot. He's funny. Um, he's just an awesome character, and I think that Ninja Theory has done a fantastic job reinventing Dante. Now, that is a big problem that a lot of people have with the game, is the fact that Ninja Theory did reinvent Dante. Now, absolutely don't worry about that, guys. Personally, I believe Dante is awesome. I think he's a great character. I think they did a great job sort of revitalizing him. And I see no problem whatsoever with the new Dante, so you guys don't have to worry about that. Now, Dante is pretty much just your average, laid-back guy. He's really not doing anything too constructive with his life. He's kind of just getting drunk every night, getting wasted all the time, going to clubs, hanging out with strippers. He's not really doing anything, you know, too constructive with his life. And one day he gets a knock on his trailer door and opens it to find Cat, uh, a member of the mysterious rebel group, The Order. Now, Cat is pretty much there to warn Dante that the hunter demon has found him. She's also there to convince Dante to meet with her boss, the leader of The Order. Now, after some fighting and some serious convincing, Cat finally gets Dante to go with her, and from there on out, um, the game starts to pick up, and Dante starts to piece together his past. He starts to learn, you know, his origins, where he came from, what he is. He learns that he's Nephilim, half demon, half angel, and the story really starts to pick up and gets very interesting. Now, what Dante learns is that Mundus, or Mundus, if you guys played the previous games, essentially ruined his life. So Dante, of course, decides that he wants to get revenge, and he heads out. Now, the entirety of the game takes place in Limbo City. Now, I know, you know, what you guys are thinking. Oh, the game takes place in one place? Every level must be extremely repetitive and boring, but that is not the case at all. Each and every one of the game's 20 levels has its own sort of distinct feel and flair, and no two parts of Limbo City will ever, ever feel the same. Now, as you play, each and every level is constantly morphing and changing, making for some very unique and interesting experiences. Levels change at will and offer up some pretty awesome set pieces to play through. It's a neat little touch that makes the game a bit unique in the world of the third-person action game. Now, like I said, the levels are constantly changing. Nothing will ever feel the same. There is no repetitiveness level-wise. Now, as the story goes on, uh, it's very cool to see Dante sort of transition from this party boy into this, you know, responsible young man. He becomes, you know, somebody who's caring, somebody who has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. And it's a cool transition to just watch. And it's also very cool to learn about Dante's backstory and to learn, you know, his origins, where he came from, who he is, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. And along the way in the story, you meet a lot of, you know, cool and interesting characters. And it's just a great story overall, and I definitely uh, enjoyed the story of Devil May Cry. It's great, and I definitely think you guys will enjoy it. 
So now let's talk about the graphics of the game. Graphically, DMC is one of the best games that I've seen in recent memory utilizing the Unreal Engine. The game looks spectacular from Dante to Cat to Virgil. Every single character model looks top notch, top notch. The enemies look great. They're all like these disgusting balls of flesh. The bosses look fantastic. The levels look fantastic. Everything just looks really, really great. And Ninja Theory should be, you know, applauded for that. It is definitely one of the best looking games that I've seen recently. It looks phenomenal. Now, through you know, throughout the time that I played the game, uh, I did notice a couple glitches. There was a minor screen tearing. You know, a little bit of pop in, a little bit of. Um, blur. There wasn't really anything that was that terrible that would really take you out of the experience, but those those little you know annoyances were there. Now I was playing on the Xbox 360, and I heard online via forums and stuff that the PlayStation 3 version had terrible screen tearing and terrible uh, frame rate issues, and that the Xbox 360 version was better. But I did not have the PlayStation 3 version to do the comparison. But, you know, playing on the Xbox 360, I had a pretty damn good time. Didn't really notice any frame rate dips. Like I said, there was a couple pop-ins. There was a couple graphical glitches. But nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Nothing that we really haven't come to, you know, deal with in this day and age of gaming. So, overall, graphically, Devil May Cry was spectacular. And, like I said, it was one of it's one of the best-looking uh, games that I've seen in recent memory. Uh, utilizing the Unreal Engine. So now gameplay, Devil May Cry is spectacular in the gameplay department. The gameplay is absolutely fantastic. Just like everything else in the game, it's sort of following this trend of awesomeness. The, the gameplay is just so over the top and so awesome. It's great. The, the combat is fluid and silky smooth and everything just looks great on screen. It's always so satisfying to build up a combo and, you know, get that SSS rank or get that SS rank. It's so satisfying to pull it off, and when you do, you're going to feel great. It is fantastic, the gameplay. There is a huge variety of combos, uh, a huge variety of moves, and as you're playing the game, you can upgrade Dante to get new moves, new abilities, all kinds of stuff. Now, Dante is equipped with a bunch of weapons in this game. He, of course, has his sword, Rebellion, and his two trusty pistols, Ebony and Ivory, and he gets a ton of other weapons in the game. He gets an angel weapon, a demon weapon, he gets some more guns. There's so many weapons to build up your combos and take out enemies in this game. It's awesome, and each and every weapon has its own sort of distinct feel and its own sort of, you know, distinct ability that makes it unique and each and every weapon just feels great and they all feel different so it's very very cool and it's a great way to sort of mix up combat and when you're fighting you can go from one weapon to the other in the blink of an eye you can do it so fast and so fluid like I said the combat is extremely fluid and uh, the gameplay actually does take some skill now when I played the DMC demo uh, going into that, I actually thought, you know, it was just a button mashing game that you just mash buttons. Now, if you do that, you're going to get killed. I can guarantee it. So pretty much what you have to do is actually, you know, strategize and think like, oh, let me hit this guy with one of my angelic weapons and then hit him with a demonic weapon and then, you know, get him in the air with ebony and ivory and take him out with rebellion. So, you know, it's a really, it adds a really cool layer of tasticity, if you will, uh, to the overall game experience. And it's just awesome. The gameplay is awesome. That is another extremely strong point of the game. Now, finally, let's end off the review talk with uh, replayability. Let's talk about replayability in the game. So playing the game, my initial playthrough on the medium difficulty took me about 11 hours and 30 minutes, and I only got about a quarter to half of all the collectibles in the game. The game is littered with collectibles. There's keys, there's hidden missions, there's lost souls to get, there's all kinds of things to get in the game that really make you want to go back and, you know, explore and do all kinds of other stuff to get your you, to get all the concept art, to get all the costumes, to get all the keys, to get all the secret rooms. There's so much stuff in this game that you're just want to go that you're going to want to go back and play it a lot. Now, like I said, my initial playthrough took me about 11 hours and 30 minutes, and that was on the medium difficulty. So let's just say you go back on a harder difficulty and you go back to find the rest 
of the you know collectibles and get the rest of the concept art and all that stuff let's tack on another hour and 30 minutes and you got yourself a 13 hour game so it's a pretty lengthy game and there is definitely a lot of replayability to DMC. So overall, I had a great time with Devil May Cry DMC, and I definitely think it's worth your guys' time and money. Uh, if I had to give it a, a number out of 10, I would definitely give it like a nine. It's a fantastic game, like I said. There's only a couple graphical glitches, and uh, the camera was a little wonky at parts. I know I didn't say that previously, but now it's coming to mind. The camera was a little wonky at parts, and there were a few graphical glitches, but all, put all that aside, and the game was fantastic, and I would definitely give it a 9 out of 10. I definitely recommend that you guys check it out, and if you do have the option, get it for the Xbox 360, just because uh, graphically it's better. But if you do have a PC, it is actually coming out for PC this week, so you can pick it up for that. And uh, that has been my review, guys, for Devil May Cry DMC. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do not forget to comment, rate, favorite, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, once again, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you, guys.